It is lefty day in America for today for MLB DFS because basically every key pitcher on Wednesday slate for MLB DFS is some high strikeout lefty. The top guys for tonight, we got Nestor Cortez. He is a lefty. Robbie Ray, lefty. Tarek Skubo, lefty. Uh, we'll go Jose Quintana, Jeffrey Springs, guys like that. But like the top three dudes for tonight in terms of salary, all left-handed pitchers. So our job is to decide, hey, which these lefties we like most for DFS, decide how harsh we go at them, and outline our thoughts for very left-handed slate for today. So let's dive on in and get you set for MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com, here to break down Wednesday's eight-game main slate with locks set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern, for today, there are a couple of rain spots out east. There is a chance of rain in New York for the Yankees and the Angels. Rain is expected to roll in later in the contest. So check back on the timing of that later. I'm expecting that game to play, but it will depend on the timing of that rain. Rain is also possible in Boston on a similar timeline, though it looks like it'll get there a bit later. It is also colder there, though, at 58 degrees. So I downgrade bats. For the Reds and Red Sox a bit, uh, there aren't a ton of super, super hot games for today in terms of temperature, so don't need to go too far with that. There's one game above 80, so don't go too far in downgrading them, but I would downgrade them a bit as a result of the weather. We'll talk about what that weather means, if we want bats there, and how to rank these high upside lefties in just one second. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed because our PGA DFS podcast for the Memorial is now posted, breaking down my favorite golfers for this week over on FanDuel. Brandon is off for this week on vacation, so I talked about uh, the course at Muirfield Village, which guys I like need salary tier, and much more. Also, of course, UFC and NASCAR coming up later on this week. Hit subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. The NBA Finals are about to heat up starting tomorrow, and you can make every game feel like Game 7 on FanDuel Sportsbook, an official partner of the NBA. Throughout the Finals, all customers can place a no-sweat same-game parlay each week. You will get up to $20 in free bets if you don't win. FanDuel has so many ways to play, and best of all, when you do win, you'll get paid faster than a fast break. Either way, you'll get up to $20 in free bets if your same-game parlay during the playoffs doesn't win. FanDuel Sportsbook, an official partner of the NBA, must be 21 plus in select states. Refund issued as non withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max free bet $20 per week. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1 800 9 with it. In Louisiana, 1 877 770 Stop. In New York, 1 877 Hope and Y. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1 800 889 9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. In West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate, as mentioned, Nestor Cortez is the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel, checking in at $10,800. Tarek Skubal is ten five. dollars Robbie Ray is ninety seven. dollars We got Michael Kopech, a righty, suspicious, checking in at ninety four. dollars Then Jose Quintana, Hunter Green, Bailey Ober, and Jeffrey Springs, lefty, are the others at $8,000 or higher. So the key question is, how do we rank these three lefties? I think that Cortez, Scoobal, and Ray are definitively the top guys for tonight. Now, Ray is on the road, whereas both those guys are at home. And it's actually a cross-country trip for Ray, too, because he's in Baltimore. But I still feel like we need him to be at the top of this lefty heap for tonight. Ray is facing the Orioles. They are a high strikeout team against lefties with a 26% strikeout rate. That is the highest on the slate by a full percentage point. And Ray is back to being what he has been in the past. The velocity for Ray has been back up across his past six starts now. And he has a 34% strikeout rate in those six starts. That is also the highest on the slate by three percentage points. So we get the highest strikeout pitcher against the highest strikeout offense. Shouldn't need to say too much more than that. We have seen Ray still have some issues with hard contact. That's why ZRA is 5.35. He has led up multiple runs in all six of those starts. So the results have not been good. 
but the Orioles are not generating a lot of power right now. They have a 118 ISO against lefties with an 85 WRC plus, and the fence being moved back to Camden Yards should help things a bit here too. I've got Ray projected at nine strikeouts for tonight. I've been logging my main slate projection since about May 12th uh, for the main slates during the week, and Ray's mark is the second highest projection that I've had in that time. So I'll be high on him here for sure. I don't care too much about the downsides that are still there with the results. Sure, they're bad, but it's a good matchup. Upside is too good. So Robbie Ray on a tough slate, still going to be my top guy for tonight. Now, as far as the number two guy goes, I'm going to go with Nestor Cortez. I do have to check back on the weather for today at Yankee Stadium because if we get rain right at first pitch, that could be a bit scary. But I'm assuming they're good to go, and I do like Nestor Cortez a lot under that assumption. It is a tough matchup for Cortez. The Angels have a 126 WRC plus against lefties, which is the best mark on the slate. They're a great offense, but they will strike out. They have a 24% strikeout rate against lefties, which gives Cortez upside. The floor is not good, but the ceiling is in this matchup. And I care more about that personally. The floor is aided by how well Cortez is pitching. He has let up a 33% hard hit rate across his nine starts this year, and that is a big part of why his ERA is so low at 1.70. Strikeout rate is 30%. That number may come down because Cortez doesn't get a lot of whiffs, and his swinging strike rate is just 9.7%. But he gets a ton of called strikes, like a lot. And it's likely due to a level of deception that he has. So I'm not sure if it's fluky, and it may come down, but I don't think it'll come down that much. I think that what he's done is probably pretty legit. Plus, I think the big thing for me is the confidence the Yankees have shown in Cortez. Last week, he was around 92 pitches through seven innings. They still sent him out there to finish the eight. He was at 105 at that point. So, okay, he finished eight innings, 105 pitches, great day. They actually let him come back out there, warm up again, and face another batter in the ninth inning. So clearly the Yankees think this guy's legit. They like his longevity. And I think we should like him too. It is risky due to the matchup, but all other factors make Cortez a high quality play for today. So among the lefties, I've got Ray one, Cortez two, Scoobal three. Do still like him. I think his matchup is better than it may seem. We'll talk about that in things to watch later on. But first, let's talk about the values here. I don't really want to go with the values too much because I love Ray. I'm very into Cortez. I do like Scoobal too. So I'd stick with those three for the most part. If you want a value, though, my favorite option here is John Gray. He is $7,500 at home against the Rays, and Gray has had an up and down year. His ERA is 5.56, and that's why I'm not enthusiastic about going to him here. But there have been some pretty rough circumstances in there for, for Gray. He has faced the Blue Jays, the Phillies, the Yankees, the Angels, and the Astros in seven starts, and only one of those starts he's had all year has been at home. That was against the Angels, and in that game, he had eight strikeouts. He did still let up four in runs, but there were some strikeouts. There's a path to a ceiling there, at least. Gray has a 22% strikeout rate since he returned from the injured list. His swinging strike rate is 11.4%, despite facing the stiff competition that he has faced. He gets the raise here. They have a 102 WRC plus in their current active roster with a 24% strikeout rate. This matchup gets a lot easier when Wander Franco is on the IL, plus... Gray can go decently deep in games. He's gone 94 and 91 pitches across his past two games. I have him projected for 5.5 strikeouts tonight. That is the most among the value plays. It's still almost three and a half lower than Ray, but it's not bad. He's at home. Don't mind the matchup. I'm not sure if I will actually use Gray personally. I think I kind of want to stick with those top three guys, but if you want to value, Gray would be my favorite. So to me... Ray Cortez Scooble, the building blocks. If you want to toss in a value, you can go John Gray. Not sure if I will get there personally. It depends on how much value I need for my batters for today. Speaking of the batters, let's dive into the stacks here and go back to Yankee Stadium. Reed Detmers had his no-hitter earlier on this year, which is a really impressive showing, but he struggled since then in two starts, and the peripherals for the full season are not ideal. So I think we should stack the Yankees against him, again, assuming that the weather allows that game to play. Detmers was undergoing a change when he threw his no-hitter. He's been throwing more change-ups across his past five starts, which does include that no-hitter, throwing fewer sliders and fewer curves in that time. And it worked, obviously. He had the no-hitter. But the ERA in that time is 3.81, considering he had a no-hitter in 20% of those games. That's a little high. 
His skill interactive ERA is five. He has allowed a 43% hard hit rate with a 47% fly ball rate. He did face the Rangers twice in that span. And uh, it's a repeat matchup, so you can, you know, ding it for that, ding the importance of it for that. But he did let up multiple home runs in the first game and in the second game. He also let up three runs to the Red Sox in this stretch. He's had no more than four strikeouts in any of these games. So the no-hitter does matter. He deserves credit for that. But you're putting him in a hitter-friendly park on the road. Even with the injuries, the Yankees do still hit lefties well. They've got a 118 WRC plus with a 203 ISO. I think we should stack them here, weather permitting, given the spot they're in against Detmers and given the underlying numbers we have with Detmers, despite the no hitter. In doing this, I will have to use DJ LeMayhew. Uh, he's not above Judge. He's not above Torres for me, but I'm going to have to use him. I typically try not to. He's honestly pretty annoying in terms of like upside. Uh, he's, he's a low upside guy. So I don't tend to use him, but he does at least have a 191 ISO against lefties this year in a small sample. 32% fly ball rate. So it's not great, but it's good enough, especially with the offense being pretty thin. So like if we're talking about the non-Judge and non-Torres guys, because I think that Judge and Torres obviously up there, I'd still use Rizzo against the lefty as well. If we're talking about the guys beyond that, I'd put DJ LeMahieu above um, Isaiah kiner falefa above Aaron Hicks, above Miguel and Duhar. I would put him above them. So, you know, He's probably fourth in the, the list for me tonight behind Judge uh, Rizzo and then uh, with Torres being up there as well. So higher than usual for DJ LeMayhew for tonight. I'm not super comfortable stacking against Hunter Green because he did help throw a no-hitter a few starts ago, but he lets up a lot of hard contact. So I think it'd be foolish to not stack against him here with the Red Sox, again, assuming the weather allows that game to play for tonight. Green has been super interesting so far this year. He has a 28% strikeout rate, which is awesome. But the non-strikeouts have been an absolute nightmare. He has a 12% walk rate, a 40% hard hit rate, and a 53% fly ball rate. He let up five home runs in one game. And he let up three last time out. And we've seen Green trying to adjust. He's a young guy trying to adjust the big leagues. Makes sense. He's been throwing more sliders across his past six starts. The launch angle against that slider is lower than his fastball, and this, the expected slugging percentage is lower too, and that should help. So more sliders should be a good thing. But that five-homer game came in this stretch with more sliders, as did the three-homer game against the Cubs. So even if the slider does move him in the right direction, it's not going to erase the issues he has had. So I think we should just keep stacking against him until he puts together a stretch of good games, and we haven't quite seen that yet. So. I will keep stacking against Green here, despite the fact I know he can have really good showings. I do think we should favor the righties here a bit. We can see Green throw his changeup against lefties, but he has never thrown it to a righty, at least not this year. So he's a two-pitch guy against righties, and his strikeout rate against them is 25%. It is 31% against lefties. The batted ball numbers are pretty similar, so righties have a slight priority, so I'm bumping up. J.D. Martinez, Trevor Story, Kike Hernandez, all those guys then get a bump up here. And I'll still love Rafael Devers, obviously, but I think the right, he's a slight edge in this matchup against Hunter Green because he is just a two-pitch guy versus potentially three pitches to lefties. For the third stack, the White Sox are facing Hunjin Ryu. They're not at their best right now. They lost Tim Anderson, who is very good against lefties, but they did just get Luis Robert back. So I think they've got enough juice in that lineup to have faith here in this spot. Ryu just doesn't seem fully right. He left after 65 pitches in his most recent start. He had tightness in his elbow, and that's a little scary. He was listed as a scheduled starter early on in the week, so that's typically a good sign, but elbow issues always are going to be scary for a pitcher. We've seen Ryu get good results since he came off the IL, but he's lining up a ton of balls in play. He has an 11% strikeout rate since he returned, and that could make you think the bad at ball data has been pretty good because the results are good. But that's not really the case. He's letting up a 45% hard hit rate with a fly ball rate at 37%. It's fine, but not great. Basically, I think Ryu's getting a little bit lucky. He may keep that up, or maybe he's not fully healthy, which could put the Sox in a good spot here. So Ryu's had good results. I do still think we should stack the White Sox despite that for tonight. I'm not sure what Robert's return will mean for Adam Engel. 
recently, whenever Engel has started, he has played the entire game. But when you can put Gavin Sheets on the bench against the lefty, you just generally have more outfield depth. So I think that we'll see Engel get a full game if he starts. And Engel can hit lefties pretty well, both last, last year and this year. So I'm willing to use him here if I need some value batting seventh or higher. So check him out. I would say I'm broadly receptive to him as someone I could be willing to use uh, just because I need some value here in the White Sox. I need guys who are not catcher slash first base eligible. That's a good thing too with them. So I'd be okay going there. I'm not expecting you on Moncada to play today. That's probably another ding to the lineup, but I still think the White Sox have enough guys to be viable for stacking. Let's move now to things to watch. I did want to talk a second about Tarek Skubal. Uh, he's facing the Twins at home today. No Carlos Correa, at least assuming he doesn't test uh, negative. No Royce Lewis. Byron Buxton's in and out, and they just played a doubleheader yesterday. So it's not a bad matchup uh, for Skubal with all those injuries considered. I would rank Skubal third behind Ray and Cortez, but high enough for me to use him for sure. It'll probably, again, be just those three for me tonight. Jason Alexander, not the Jason Alexander, a Jason, Jason Alexander is making his debut for the Brewers tonight. Not a guy I want to stack against. Uh, he's facing the Cubs. Alexander had a 63% ground ball rate in AAA this year. It was 69% last year. So he's facing the Cubs. Winds are in a bit today. Temperature 61 degrees. I'm okay being low on the Cubs here against Alexander. Finally, I think you can stack the Mariners again today. They're facing Kyle Bradish, who... Get some strikeouts, but similar to Green, it's just what happens when he doesn't get strikeouts that pushes us here for stacking. We can see Bradish have really good games because of the strikeouts, but and that's why the Mariners are higher on my list, but I would put them fourth here behind the White Sox, the Red Sox, and the other team discussed at the top, which I forgot already. It was uh, the Yankees. So Yankees, Red Sox, White Sox, I'll put the Mariners number four on that list. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls for tonight. We saw both Matt Olson and Eduardo Escobar go deep last night. So uh, two for two there. Let's try to do it again here and go with a couple of uh, pretty fun guys. The first one being Trevor Story, obviously just destroying the cover off the ball right now. I picked him over J.D. Martinez because Story has a higher fly ball rate against righties. Could have gone either way. I'll go Story due to the fly ball rate as the boring one. The fun one, you could push back on whether this is fun, but he's $3,000 on FanDuel. So Glaber Torres, um, if you look at his very small sample numbers against lefties this year, it's like a 60% fly ball rate. Sick. 13% uh, strikeout rate. Love that. So uh, Homer calls for today. Trevor Story and Glaber Torres. Uh, we'll try to go to two in a row for tonight. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shop, but we are back once again tomorrow to break down Thursday slate and Friday slate as well. Of course, we have our PGA podcast over on the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed. Search for that. Hit subscribe, check out the PGA podcast and come back for USC and NASCAR later in the week as well. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. I'll talk to you once again on Thursday for another slate of MLB DFS. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.